2018 bond HVAC roofing projects. Conan, you're still up. Oh, my, John is. He didn't is look up. Me? John gets this job. Handed the baton. I get the job. Good evening. Tonight, Donnie Brown and I are presenting the first phase of the HVAC and roofing projects in the 2018 bond program to be completed over the next four years. I will address the approach we took in the selections process, and Donnie will delve into the specifics of the projects. Working with Katie and Conan, we developed the proposed spending plan for, for this phase, first phase, and we'll continue collaborating with them through the end of this segment of the bond program. The work we are proposing has its focus on full replacements to provide greater efficiencies and long-term value as opposed to lesser efficient partial or patch type replacements. The plan does, however, allow for some replacements of isolated items or areas deemed appropriate. It is worth noting that as a result of the campus replacements in the 2014 and the 2018 bond programs that at their completion, the district will have full HVAC uh, replacements at 10 of its campuses and full roofing replacements in at least eight campuses. It's a tremendous step forward in our maintenance program. <clears throat> The approach for the $18 million allotment for HVAC and roof replacements will be proposed in phases. Again, we are presenting the first phase tonight. It was understood by the bond committee and the board at the time of the, the bond program was being assembled that a triage approach made the most sense given the large number of competing HVAC and roofing projects uh, excuse me, roofing needs we have due to aging facilities and equipment. Prior to making selections, there was a considerable amount of data collection and analysis undertaken by our department with the help of PBK's long-range facility assessment and that of mechanical firm Estes McClure and Associates. With those assessments, we also looked at our work orders and determine the troubled campuses as well as specific chronic problem areas of concern in facilities that didn't warrant full replacement strategies. We use these data sources to identify the scope of phase one and we'll continue with that same process going forward. Now Donnie will tell you about the projects we're proposing. Thank you John, good evening everybody. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the, the HVAC projects and the roofing projects that we're proposing for the 2019-2020 uh, school year. Um, as we go through this, I'll talk about the project details. Um, we'll look at a few slides of the uh, roofing projects that we plan to cover, and we'll talk about the timelines for these projects. Um, for the HVAC projects, um, we chose to do Grace Hardeman Elementary School and Watauga Middle School. This will also include full replacements of the EMS systems. Um, urgent needs, we take care of that on a case-by-case -case basis. We have an example that I can go over to give you some more details on what, what that project looks like as we approach those. Um, for the roofing projects, we are going to do the Birdville High School project and uh, the Northridge Middle School kitchen. For the uh, HVAC replacements at uh, Grace Hardeman Elementary School and Watauga Middle School, um, these campuses, the, the HVAC equipment in these buildings, it's reached its useful life cycle. Um, the, in both schools, they're, they're 20 plus years old. Um, they tend to be the most problematic uh, units that we have in the district. Um, there's times that we go out to, to make repairs and, and the equipment is obsolete and we can't get parts or, or, or we can get parts but it takes weeks to get them because it's, it's hard to track them down. Um, something else about this equipment, it has the uh, R22 refrigerant. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, that is a, uh, nowadays we use equipment with 410A and um, they quit manufacturing R22 equipment several years ago and then starting in 2020 they won't even make the refrigerant. So. Um, our only option there is to, to use uh, substitute refrigerants, but um, 
engineers and manufacturers don't recommend it. Um, we did we did test it in a few units here to make sure it would work, and we found that it, it is okay, and, and we can use that in some cases. Um, these projects, what we've decided to do is we're going to bid them as one project. Um, these schools are adjacent to each other, and so we were thinking that it would just make sense to go ahead and package it up because they are just r right there together. Um, the project budget for Grace Hardeman Elementary School is $1.8 million and the project budget for Watauga Middle School is $3 million. Um, what, are, what are urgent needs for HVAC? What does that mean? Um, basically, what, what, what that means is we have an air conditioning piece of equipment that, that serves the space and it no longer works. It's, 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 it's broke and it's not heating or cooling the space. And so our staff gets out there and they find that they can't find the, the replacement parts because they're not made or, or they're just too costly. So one of the things we do when we look at this is um, we say, okay, well, here's a unit and we need to replace a compressor. It's, it's a major part for a unit, but the cost of it may exceed the, 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 by 50% of what a, a full replacement will cost. So it just really doesn't make sense to us to, to put that money into that. So we elect to go ahead and just do a full life cycle replacement of that equipment. Um, a recent example would be Holiday Heights Elementary School. Uh, the kitchen AC unit went down. Uh, the guys got out there, um, the, the compressor was shot, and it, we started looking at our alternatives on what we could do. We could, we could get one, how long would it take, what was the cost, and, and we evaluated it, and we found that um, we could work with Train. They're, a bot, they're an approved by board vendor, um, and, and they were able to complete the project for around $23,000. So what happened is, is this, this unit failed on a Tuesday. We went out and replaced it on a Saturday. And so when the staff came back on Monday, the kitchen was working and everything was nice and cool. And so the project was a success. And we, we had these little things pop up throughout the year. And uh, so that would be our urgent needs. For the roof replacements, um, as I mentioned, Birdville High School, what we were going to do is apply a new TPO roof to the existing roof. This excludes the additions that were done and through the 2014 bond. So the science edition and the fine arts and athletics, those, those won't be touched. It's just the, the original building. Um, the, we have increased leaks in this building and, and we, we make repairs and we go out and do maintenance, but they just continue to persist. Um, these leaks that over time, uh, they could cause damage to the facility. I mean, it's disruptive to learning. When we're out there dealing with leaks and trash cans and contractors working. So that's, that's why we've picked this project. Um, Northridge Middle School, we are proposing a new fluid applied roof over the existing kitchen roof. Um, that roof is existing to the building. It's a 30-year-old roof. Um, we've made repairs to get through the rest of this year, and we are planning on taking care of that this summer. Excuse me, what's a TPO roof? TPO roof? It's a, it's a, a thermoplastic membrane type roof. Okay. Um, what we'll do on that roof when we put it, we'll, we'll go in and infill between the, uh, it's, it's a standing seam roof. So we'll, we'll do some infill on that and then, then we'll apply that roof membrane to that. Okay. Um, is, 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 any more questions on that? No. Okay. Um, Pe people just use too many acronyms and abbreviations and school people are the worst at it. So. Yeah. Uh, understood. <laughs> Thank you for clearing it up. <laughs> um, well, th this picture here, this is an old aerial shot of the school prior to the addition. So everything you see there in the, uh, the silver, that, that is, will be the scope of the work that, that will be covered in this project. This is the uh, Northridge Middle School kitchen. Um, I highlighted the area down there in the lower left-hand corner. It's just a, a small little project. There's, there's not a lot to it. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the, the project timeline, um, uh, what we plan on doing with the HVAC projects, um, we plan on, on starting design with the engineers in September after school started, and then we will we'll work through December, have 100% documents in December. Um, after we return from our, our winter break, we'll, we'll, we'll bid the job, and then our plan is to bring it to, to you in February for a recommendation, and uh, we will do that project June to August. Now, that, that's a tight, small schedule to do to do a lot of work because we will be inside those buildings and taking out air conditioners and ceilings will be out. But we've done these projects in the past here and successfully done them and school starts and everything seems to work out. Um, urgent needs, HVAC, we've, we've talked about that. Those are, those are the one-offs that we deal with on a case-by-case -case basis throughout the year. 
Uh, the roof project timeline. Design phase will be this summer. Um, later this summer, we will start the bidding phase. Um, in the fall, we'll make a recommendation, and then the construction is uh, proposed to go from November 2019 to October 2020. Um, we realize that this project takes place when school is in session and staff and students will be there. Uh, we'll work with the campus administrators and, and make sure we, we come up with a plan that, that is safe and, and, and doesn't cause an impact to the, to the learning at the campus. Um, for the Northridge Middle School kitchen project, um, John and I have elected to go ahead and just use some uh, buy board vendors. Um, we're going to get three bids. And then we'll, we'll work with uh, Katie and Shelley to m come up with a recommendation for the, the contractor. Um, we'll present that in June. Um, small project, we should be able to get it done in the, in the summer uh, month of July. Any questions? Any questions anyone has? Go forward. Thank you very much. I, I'm sorry, Richard. Yeah, Mr. There, Tolbert has a question. I'm sorry, there was one. I'm sorry, you thought you were through. <laughs> Uh, how extensive is our um, requirement for commissioning uh, HVAC systems that, that, you know, where it's complete replacement? What, how extensive is that? Um, on, on the new schools, we, we are doing full commissioning and test and balance. On, on these projects, we just do a test and balance is, is what we've planned to do. Because um, all, all we have is really one system. I mean, it's just the air conditioner. Um, in some cases, we just reconnect back to the existing ductwork. So it's, it's more or less a one-for-one one replacement. And so typically what we do is just a, a test and balance. So Hardeman and what, what will they be? Just uh, uh, Well, Hardeman has water source heat pumps pr predominantly throughout the school. So what we have to do is we have to go in. Uh, we'll, we'll have to remove the ceilings. No, I mean, what kind of test will be for that one? Oh, an just the, the, the test and balance? It's just, just test and balance it, it's, for it's those. It's industry standard test okay. and balance. Okay. And is, does the HVAC contractor do that, or do you all have a third party do it? It's third party, and it's managed by us. Okay. All right. Good. Other questions? All right. 